you're a gift. You have a gift. And if you're having Mm -hmm. struggles finding what that gift is or that purpose, sit back in the moment, ask yourself the questions. In the quiet, the answers come. In the quiet, the answers come. Just hearing those words in my own voice is a reminder of why I choose to be here with you week after week. Thank you for making that choice as well. And this week, it's an extra special, holistically speaking, because it's my birthday. But I have to admit, it's been a tough couple of weeks leading up to this moment, both personally and professionally. And it has nothing to do with age. Well, okay, maybe it has something to do with age, but we're going to call them growing pains. And what really gives me hope and a drive to push forward is being accountable and showing up for you. I continue to heal by allowing you in to get to know me better. You see, healing isn't possible without that step, allowing. Allowing vulnerability, allowing openness, allowing courage, So that each conversation we have lets you know that I'm just like you. I experience the highs, the lows, the goods, the bads, the traumas and the triumphs that this podcast is really about. And I'm here because I've been there. So this week we go deeper as I share parts of me that you may not know about. How passion and purpose has propelled me forward in healing and in growing. And I'm not sugarcoating anything in this episode just because it's my birthday, especially because it's my birthday. Let's just call it a deep dive into radical audacity, shall we? And when podcast host Tiffany Kane invited me on her show to share what it means to be radically audacious, I couldn't resist. Because like I said, sharing and letting people in is how you heal how I chose the path that worked for me, how my voice and connection are my superpowers and service to myself and others, from letting go of the comfort and security that was keeping me small to facing my big girl moment and first real adult trauma that changed me forever, and how all of this moved me into the work I do now, the healing work that is so much bigger than me. It is my hope that you find that one aha moment in this conversation that you can implement into your own life. For me, that would be the best gift to receive, knowing that I touch, moved, and inspired you in some way to say yes to yourself and have the radical audacity to dream big, to own your story, and to find your joy. And be okay, even when you're not okay. And one more thing, do yourself a favor and stick around until the end, because I have a special gift that I'm sharing with you this week, just for you, that you can take with you anywhere and anytime you need to find your purpose as well, and listen for those answers. Okay, it's time to let go of the reins here and pass things over to Miss Tiffany for some radical audacity. Welcome to the Radical Audacity Podcast. I'm Tiffany Kane, your host. On this podcast, you are going to meet people that walk their own path, live life on their own terms, let go of other people's rules and expectations and the shoulds in life, and instead live life in their own truth, integrity, and authenticity. This podcast will give you the inspiration you need to live your own radically audacious life. Enjoy the episode. Hello, everyone. I am here today with a guest that I am so thrilled to introduce you to. You want to talk about a radically audacious human. This is one of them. Hillary Russo has her own podcast called Holistically Speaking. But that's not all, my friends. She spent years as an award-winning TV journalist. She now does work as a holistic health coach and mental health practitioner, which we're going to dive more into because she does some exciting things there. She is an award-winning professor at a very prestigious university in uh, for broadcast and journalism 
And like I said before, she has her own podcast. So you guys, this buckle up your seatbelts. This is going to be a really fun ride today as we talk with Hillary. Welcome, Hillary. Tiffany, I loved it. Thank you so much for welcoming me on your show. Let's get radical. Ah, let's get radical. Let's get into that <laughs> radical audacity. Let's dive right into it. You, ha- you, your, I believe your story is filled with the radically audacious moments where you say heck no to some things and heck yes to others. And you make decisions that you know, maybe not everybody agrees with or would have, but you make the decisions that are right for you, which is radical audacity, right? Living in your authenticity. Mm. So we'd love to hear a little bit of your journey, news anchor to university professor to holistic health coach to podcaster, like there's quite a journey there. Will you give us a little bit of a snippet specifically news anchor to not news anchor. That's a really cool story. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And that definitely was a radical, audacious moment for me. I mean, I was a young journalist and Mm -hmm. I always knew that that my voice was going to be heard. Uh, And I think, you know, it's funny, some of that might come from my own childhood stuff of being the baby of the family and wondering Mm. if, uh, do I have a voice? I always was very creative and outgoing and loved a stage, loved an audience. But moving into the space where I was holding space for others to share their stories or Mm. being the bearer of information as a news anchor, it came really while I was in college. And I just organically moved into the space of being a radio show host right out of college uh, and then moving into television. And I did it for a number of years, but there was something that just wasn't resonating with me. And I think sometimes it was going on on the stories that were doom and gloom. You know, as they say Mm -hmm. in the news business, this was a big line is if it bleeds, it leads. And that just, it never sat well with me because I want to, I get it. It's important for us to share authentic information. And look, being in the age we're in now with this pandemic, there's a lot of stuff that's out there where people are questioning and politics, same thing. People are questioning each other. I I grew up in a space of real storytelling, you know, mm-hmm. listening to the Charles Kuraltz and the Studs Turkles and the the people that were truly telling stories or holding space for the human interest stories as well. And that's the kind of stuff I love to share. Mm. So when 9-11 happened, I was on the news anchor desk that day. I was in my young, I was in my 20s and my late 20s. And that day changed me in Mm -hmm. so many ways, as it did many. But being on that desk that day and being far away from home, because I wasn't in New York when it happened, but I'm from New York not knowing where my family is, having to go on air every 30 minutes, update people, seeing things on the news feed that I don't even know if they've been released yet because nobody knew it was happening then. So a lot of stuff was kept under wraps. But seeing things that I don't know if anybody should be seeing. Yeah. You know, and it creates a sense of trauma. There's a trauma yes. that happened there. And I didn't have the tools to know how to deal with it. And you go, you know, you go in the headspace of I've got information to share. And that's it. Like, This is the script you're handed. This is what you're reading, or this is what I'm researching and writing because I was also a producer. And that in itself um, was a shift for me because Mm -hmm. at the time I was married, my first marriage, I've been married twice, Mm -hmm. my first marriage uh, to a really wonderful man that we're still good friends. And he military, I was a military wife. So I had a husband that was on a base and not knowing where he was and wondering what was going on. And I was away from the base. And it really opened my eyes to a lot of stuff because we had already had orders to move to another base. So in oh that tra- that transition period, I was really in the thought process and a shift in my life of, do I want to do this anymore? You know? Mm-hmm. And that was probably the first shift in my life that opened doors of what do I want in this next part of my journey. I find so much radical audacity in that curiosity about what do I want in this Mm. next phase of my life. You, so many people go, you're on a news anchor desk. That's where, that's the dream of so many people and you are living the dream and yet you chose not to stay with Mm. that dream. But what you chose was what was right for you And you went a different path. And that to me 
is the beauty of that's radical audacity of, of heck yes, this is who I am and this is the journey I want to go on. Um, you talked about the trauma mm. of sitting on the news desk during 9-11 of your husband being deployed in the military and you not knowing where he was and having to move in that time. Mm. What helped you heal from that trauma? I think life is an, a never-ending healing process of traumas in our lives, <laughs> which is why the work yes, I do is. today. But even in that moment, I think that was really the first big girl moment. Uh, mm. You know, I had some earlier going through some major surgery as a kid, but in this time as an adult, my first real adult trauma that I was dealing with was definitely that, and also. A year later, after we had made the move, moving to a different military base, I lost my dad. My father oh. passed away. And my father was supposed to be in the North Tower on 9-11. My dad was disabled. They canceled the meeting or were rescheduling it because he was an attorney and the other attorney couldn't make the deposition. If my father was in that tower on that day, he would not oh. have made it out. There, there's no question in my mind, considering he was an amputee, he would not made it out. And I had my dad for another year. He he wound up he wound up passing from a massive heart attack, um, complications from diabetes. But in that time, I realized how precious life really is. Mm -hmm. And and my father was always so proud of me being a news anchor, so proud of me taking that route. Because in my mind, I was like, maybe I'll go to you know, because I was an actor as well. I, I went I was in theater for years and I was thinking of going to like the American Academy of Dramatic Arts and my dad being the traditionalist, but always supporting me as my parents do, was like maybe a four year institution like a institution, maybe we shouldn't use that word. Four year college. <laughs> feels like an institution <laughs> sometimes, uh, where you're getting like a ideal education. And I did that. I went that route. I, I trusted my father. And making the decision to walk away from that after my father passed and making that another radical move to not be in uh, broadcasting as I was full time mm -hmm. with the benefits and the, you know, all the exposure that I had that was under the guidance of a, a television network and program was a, was a big step for me because I, I walked away from security yeah even and and had to find myself again and and wound up getting back into acting and theater for some time and then it's hard to step away from the on camera when you're so used to mm -hmm. it so I found my own path and for the past 20 years now plus I've been on my own building my own brand. And it's been a series of, of twists and turns because much mm -hmm. of that happened with other traumas that came into my life that I've turned mm -hmm. into the triumphs, you know? And uh, while that relationship didn't last and I have so much love and respect for it and I hold space for it, I, you know, moving into another relationship that didn't work out where there was uh, a lot of toxicity in the second relationship I had, that's another shift, a powerful shift that moved me into this space where I want to take care of my health, looking back at my dad's. I want to take, I want to hold space for others to take care of theirs mm -hmm. because for so many years, Tiffany, I was holding space for people to share their stories in a broadcast world. Now mm -hmm. I wanted to hold space for people more intimately in a private world where they feel safe and comfortable sharing with me as a coach and mental health practitioner. So it's blending the, the passion and the purpose and making that the profession. Mm. I love what you just said about blending passion and purpose. Mm. Sometimes people confuse passion for their purpose. Mm -hmm. And sometimes people confuse purpose for their passion. Mm -hmm. But it's that blend, that place where they overlap. Mm -hmm. That's where we we find our thing, right? We mm -hmm. find what it is that we are supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's so powerful and it's so hard to find. It is, but, but it's so good. It's sitting in the silence and being comfortable with the uncomfortable. It's it's sitting mm -hmm. it's standing in the tension. It's it's being okay with the resistance. And yes. the purpose is something that all of us are seeking. 
you know, and mm-hmm. there's shifts in our lives and we're like, what's my purpose? What's my purpose? I find that I face that a lot with my clients, especially women that once the kids are out of the, the home and they have like the new, the newness of not having the the at-home mother to take care of, what do I want to move into in my life? Or if a divorce happens or if um, just something happens where they're finding who they are again, there's a purpose there. And it's it's really beautiful to see that when they allow themselves to be aware that this is happening. Yes. And the passion mm-hmm. are the things that we love to do. They might be part of our core values. They, they're they the things that bring us joy in life. And when you can blend that with your purpose and mm-hmm. make it and make it mean something where you're serving others, which is your profession, because professions are all in service of, right? Huh, yeah. It's like pff, mind-blowing. 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 I yeah. feel like we could probably do a whole episode <laughs> on just that because there is so much yeah. we could unpack there. Mm. Um, but I I really want to dig into you a little bit more. Sure. Sometime I'll have you back talking passion to purpose to yeah. profession because I really, really think that's important. But for right now, I want to talk about you. You moved you you went from podcast host to or I'm sorry from broadcast journalism to um university professor um holistic health coach podcaster you're just a multi-passionate mm. person and you you bring in cuz you mentioned before that the doom and gloom stories were very painful to you and that it was those the real storytelling the digging into people that was really I'm guessing that's your passion. So how do you combine your passion and your purpose? What is that? Where is that sweet spot for you? That's a beautiful question. Thank you. Um, For me, the blending of the passion and the purpose is really sitting back and realizing that we're all holding space for each other in this world. Mm -hmm. And I, for me, knowing that my voice and connection are my superpowers, knowing that Mm -hmm. I have something really special, uh, that I know that it's a gift and I'm okay with that. Like I, I accept Mm -hmm. that so much. We, so many times we think that that, oh no, that's I'm not like that. And it's not a conceited thing. It's like really truly owning and realizing you are a gift. Every single person listening, yes. every person out there on this planet, but specifically your listeners, because they're tuning in for this, you're a gift. You have a gift. And if mm-hmm. you're having struggles finding what that gift is or that purpose, sit back in the moment, ask yourself the questions. In the quiet, the answers come. And for me, Mm -hmm. it was realizing that I've been holding space for people to share their stories for so long. There was a point in my life where I'm like, should I be a therapist? Like, am I doing like the right (laughs) thing here? But when you're holding space for people to share and you're listening, you kind of are being Mm -hmm. a therapy to them in a way. And the natural transition for me when my second relationship did not continue because it was not a it, they were it was not an environment I wanted to be around and it, and it took mm-hmm. a while to remove myself from that you and I have had conversations about this just with your own journey I realized that in that time I was actually working with and I'm still working with them a, a daily burn 365 which is a live streaming fitness show where we're the first ones out there before all these live streaming shows are out there and there's a there was a chat element a community element and people were very comfortable talking to me and I'm like I love talking about health. Mm -hmm. I love talking about wellness. I love helping people on their journeys. Wait, what? Mm -hmm. There's a job called health coach? Okay. And the interesting thing is years prior, I was actually hired by the Institute for Integrative Nutrition, which is the largest health coaching school in the world. And they brought me in to be one of their educators for their online curriculum. I had no idea what that was. And (laughs) And I remember sitting in that space being like, you know, in the broadcast room where we're recording, all the cameras are on me and the lights. And I'm thinking, I love this place. Not the actual space of the broadcast studio, but I love, I feel like I'm walking into a Whole Foods. There's something about this place. It's very like Zen and real. And and Mm -hmm. I I said, I'm going to be back here. I don't know how, 
And I manifested it because a couple of years later, I wound up going to IIN as a student. So I was watching myself well, in the videos, right? <laughs> like that's, I mean, I'm still in the modules. <laughs> that's a crazy moment. Right? So there's, that's a crazy moment. there's that on top of the story of the Daily Burn where I wound up, you know, I'm on the show still. It's a live streaming show you can watch. And it's kind of like the Today Show of Fitness. And mm. being very connected to the community there, supporting them, and then going into the mental health side of things, which is the havening techniques, which is the modality I mainly use and I'm, I'm known for. Um, all of that together, I'm like, wait, okay. So I love holistic health. I love neuroscience and helping people uh, turn their traumas into triumphs and give them the tools to heal themselves. Because I'm not healing you. I'm just, I'm just like your mechanic from the side. You know, I'm just helping you tune up mm-hmm. the car. And holding space for you and being your cheerleader. And that with my voice and my media background has allowed me to really beautifully pair the 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 passion of of the holistic health and mental health and being well and living well with the purpose which is I know my voice and my connection is the way to resonate that whether it be privately or publicly and then that became what it is today holistically speaking. Oh my gosh, I love That's this. That's a long especially, way of going. Especially <laughs> No, it's a, such a beautiful journey, especially it's just such a, I'm not going to say full circle moment because you ended up somewhere very different, but that moment when you realized, okay, I I like having the space to tell the stories, mm-hmm. you know, like where you were at in the newsroom, mm-hmm. but I don't like the doom and gloom stories. I like the raising people up and the health and the, the holistic, and now you get to do yeah. that. And if you had stayed on the that news desk, you would still be telling doom and gloom stories and there would be a little piece of you you were not honoring and you weren't authentic to. And probably a little piece of you, like every time you get on that, you would have gotten on that stage, you would have died a little bit because you weren't being authentic to yourself. I feel that so deeply right now. My chest, (laughs) like my hand is on my chest because that's so true. And I've been, Mm -hmm. and life for me is a falling into we fall into mm. the things. I say this all the time on my podcast, and I share this with my my clients and my guests as well on the podcast. Life is a falling into. Things happen so mm-hmm. organically if we just allow them and let go. Yes. And letting go of the anchor desk was a big move for me because I was letting go of security. I was letting go of my face mm-hmm. being known, the, the ego side of things, right? But what happened, oh, yeah. what happened from that is like tenfold because I've I've been – on QVC for the last X amount of years. I don't know. The first time I went on was like 2012, and now I'm in the health and fitness division. I host a show for CVS Health, which is all about going to impoverished communities that are doing something to promote better health and wellness within their communities. So as a journalist now, I get to travel the country mm-hmm. insp- and sharing inspiring stories about health and wellness or doing my podcast, which is Trauma to Triumphs through Health, Healing, and Humor, or being hired by different production companies that want to bring me in and talk about financial wellness or do television appearances where I talk about different ways to be kind to your mind. All of that has manifested from the guest speaking roles to the guest expert, whatever it is I'm doing, all of that is still happening. And then being to so beautifully come home and be one-on-one with clients and Mm -hmm. let them share their journeys and know that they are so safely supported in a safe container where there is no broadcasting. It's up to them to broadcast their shine. I'm just giving them the tools to do so or when I do retreats, or when I do workshops. So I have that beauty of the media girl that is sharing the shine. And then I have Mm -hmm. the beauty of the practitioner girl who is sharing the shine with someone else to be able to shine their beacon even further, you Mm -hmm. know? Mm. I love that so (laughs) much. (laughs) Okay, I think this is a really great time. Mm -hmm. To move into the fun spot, the fun part where I get to ask you a whole bunch of questions where the audience gets to know you on a little bit of a different level. Mm -hmm. So the first question that I always love to ask people comes from a very selfish place. I'm a big old book nerd and I'm always looking for new books to read. <laughs> yeah. So I always love to ask Hillary, what book are you reading right now? 
Interestingly enough, Hillary is not a one person book reader. I have like a mm, stack of books. I love it. I'm I'm like my mother. I'm so my mother's daughter because I remember her having the stack of books when I was growing up. Like, you know, like the Marian Williamson return to <laughs> like a woman's worth. And then there'd be like men are from Mars, women are from Venus. And I'm like, this woman's crazy with all these books. And now I'm reading those, right? But right <laughs> now, <crazy> too. <laughs> my three stacker is... Uh, three have, stacker. I have I a love three it. stacker. I just finished Mel Robbins first book, The Five Second Rule. Mm. And I also have uh, Your Resonant Self, which is Sarah Payton's book. Ooh. And I love Sarah. She was actually a guest on my podcast. She is a nonviolent communicator and a neuroscience expert. Fabulous book, including meditations. I highly recommend her and then listen to the podcast. And then, of course, someone we've talked about, both of us, is Dan Buettner's the Blue Yay. Zone Challenge, which I'm reading now because I'm doing the challenge. And I had him on a guest. Ooh. Yes. I got to live it. You know, you can't just like talk about yeah. it. I, I do. I'm one of those people that if I have someone come on my podcast, I'm reading your book. I'm not skimming through it. I'm reading it because I can only be as organic yeah. as I and authentic as possible when I am truly knowledgeable about you, not just in the book. That's probably the journalist side of me, but I, mm -hmm. I've loved, you know, his work for so long. So I'm doing the Blue Zone Challenge right now. And that's, that book is, uh, you know, four weeks to adding 10 years to your life and living like the centenarians do in the Blue Zone regions of the mm -hmm. world. So why not? I can use an extra 10 years, can't you? <laughs> Can we hover here with Dan Buettner for just a second? You love talking about Dan. I do. I'm I'm a little bit of a fangirl. And <laughs> Me too. Um, so listeners, I was on Hillary's podcast. Um, we were recording a little bit earlier and totally fangirled over Dan Buettner. And I want to do the fangirl moment here on my podcast. So um, if you guys don't know who Dan Buettner is, he is... Um, well, Hillary, you talked sure. about him. You got to introduce him. Of course. Uh, my friend you got Dan. To interview him. Yes. Yeah. Had a Your friend Dan. Dude, my friend hey. Dan. Me and Dan. Uh, but first, he used the word awesome and Hillary in the same sentence. So yes. he pretty much is your fan. And he also or talked me into joining TikTok. Friend. I love sharing that. Wow. <laughs> the reason I'm on <laughs> the reason Hillary is on TikTok is holistically speaking, is because Dan told me I needed to join. I'm like, I'm like two years late to this platform, but because Dan Butner told me to, I'm gonna do it. So Dan <laughs> is right. Dan Butner is a National Geographic fellow. He is a journalist. He is a two-time God, I should be hired, but like as his agent, I talk about him so much. He is a I think you need to. two-time world record breaker, Guinness Book world rec rec record breaker for long distance cycling. And also because of all his travels as a journalist, he discovered that there were areas around the world that had people living well into their 100s, the centenarians of the world. And I don't just mean living, I mean thriving. So those thriving. areas are Okinawa, Japan, Nicoya, Costa Rica, Icaria, Greece, Sardinia, Italy, and believe it or not, only one area in the stage, which is Loma Linda, California, where the seventh days live. And the whole idea is Ooh. based on nine principles, the power nine, which is these nine principles that he found all of these regions, the original five blue zones, were following. Nine principles from like creating your moai, which is your community, your tribe, and, you know, eating mm -hmm. beans and a number, you know, getting out and being active, not taking CrossFit, but actually being active. The, all these are, all right. these are part of the nine principles, spirituality, all that, all that. And when he found was in these regions uh, of, of, of five, the five original, which he's now branching out across the world, trying to implement the blue zones in different areas of the world, including here in the States, none of these areas have chronic illness. They don't battle things mm. like diabetes and heart disease. They live well. They live long. They are happy. And that is the idea of what Blue Zone Living is. So he just came out mm -hmm. with, I don't even know what number book this is, but it's a challenge <laughs> based on the Blue Zone principles that you can do for four weeks, including how, and don't, don't want to call it a diet because it's not, implementing mm -hmm. these principles into your life to Add a 10 extra years to your life and also just see how you start building that community of your own. And it's it's really mm -hmm. beautiful. So I've been doing it along with with um, many others. 
And Mm -hmm. that is who Dan is. And I highly recommend reading The Blue Zones, which is the first book. And then if you and I talked about the cookbook, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Which he doesn't like to call a cookbook. He doesn't like to call it a cookbook. I'm like, dude, it's a cookbook. (laughs) He's like, okay, we could call it a cookbook. (laughs) I love that. Okay. Yeah. So we had our fangirl moment. That was awesome. Yay. Now we get to move into, they're making a movie of your life, Hillary. (laughs) Oh, I know. I forgot right? to look over and that you question. Get to, <laughs> right. You get to pick three songs for the soundtrack. Only three. This is probably the hardest question for music fans. What would your three songs be? There's got to be a Sting song in there somewhere because I have an obsession with Sting. <sighs> like maybe okay. almost ridiculously to the point where it's restraining order. Um <laughs> If you're listening, Sting, I promise I don't have your address. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I, <laughs> but I'll I, find it. I'm a journalist. <laughs> I love. No, I would never do that. I love his song "Fragile." I've always loved that song oh. "Fragile." There's something really, very deep, deep about that song that resonates with me. Um, I love that song. Yeah, this is a this. I didn't. I didn't really look through these before, so this is like very interesting to have be put on the spot with this. So I'm just going to come with what first comes to mind. Songs that are sure. in my head right Great. now. Right. I love Pharrell Williams' "Happy." Yeah, because I feel like we need to find our state of joy. I want that song in there somewhere. You know. Mm-hmm. And I th- I, I'm going to go back old school, and. I know this is going to change the minute we stop pressing record. I'm going to be like, no, I should have said this. But you got to go with your instinct, right? <laughs> so I, I really love Pocket Full of Sunshine. <laughs> I got oh. a pocket full of Pocket Full of Sunshine. I love that song. It just gets me really jazzed. I can't remember who's right, who saying that. Kyla Minogue. No, I don't remember. That's going back. Is that dating me a little bit? I don't have to find it. No. 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 Not at all. Yeah. No, definitely not. Or Walking you know, on going Sunshine. Back to One sting. of those two. Yeah. Oh, walking on sunshine. I'm walking oh, on sunshine. Yeah. That's, that's, what, that's walking what I meant. On walking on sunshine. Yep, there you go. Yeah, that's a great song. There you go. I just love it. Love it. Going back to Sting, mm-hmm. Ten Sumner's Tales was, oh. is one of my all time favorite albums. Yeah. yeah. So I love that. He's that got was such a beautiful so album. So much good music. It's not, he's, he's back out too. He's got another one that just came out. I haven't gotten well, it yet. It, I, he's going to be a centenarian singing <sighs> when he's 120, still looking hot. So yeah, I mean, go. he's been talking about tantrum <laughs> sex for years. Sorry, I'm just going to like uh, drop that no. on your podcast. Is We're, that okay? Go there. Um, yeah. Yeah, he's definitely going to be a centenarian. <laughs> definitely. I mean, he's, oh, yeah. he's living he's it. So he's cool. in his 60s and he looks great. And there's other people out there like that that are rocking it. You know what? I just mm-hmm. I just was on – I just saw Billy Joel in concert front row. I was one of the fir- the only 40 oh that got front row seats. And wow. I – yeah, at MSG. And I'm thinking these are the legacies. Like these are the people whose music mm-hmm. is timeless. and Timeless. Yeah. Although I really – I would love to see For front sure. row sting. That would be awesome. Oh, I'm not sure I'm allowed. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, last question, yes. last question. Radical audacity. We've talked about radical audacity a lot today. Mm-hmm. What is your latest act of radical audacity where you said heck yes to yourself that you'd like to share with us? I really believe in the work I'm doing. I really mm. believe in the work I'm doing. And I was never like a science nerd at all. But I truly believe that we have the power to change our thoughts, moods, and our behaviors. Yes. And really own our truth. And I've been really gifted by having another falling into, which is being in the community of Havening Techniques practitioners. And this is not a sell Mm. by any means. This is me truly believing in the power of this neuroscience approach that really puts the power in the hands of those that are able to use it themselves, putting the power of emotional well-being in your hands. Because Will you tell us just for absolutely. a second about havening? What is that? So havening is a psychosensory approach, meaning that it uses one of the senses, which is touch. And we need touch. We are put in our mother's arms mm. the minute we come out of the womb. We need touch in order to be well-rounded and, and thrive. We can't live without mm-hmm. touch. And part of that is self-love. You have to know how to love mm-hmm. yourself. And being able to share this gift, which is 
using the havening touch and pleasant distraction, which could be that joyful moment, that thought of that great vacation you had or a song that you hum, hum and you love to sing or hearing the laughter of a child, whatever it is, your favorite dessert, those are all pleasant distractions. When you pair that together with the havening touch, which is like rubbing your hands together, uh, like you're washing your hands or giving yourself a hug on your shoulders and arms or touching your face like a facial, that's that's the havening touch. When you pair that together, you put the brain in what they call a delta wave state. And delta wave is sleep state, mm. slow moving brain waves. And that releases the oxytocin, serotonin, and dopamine, the happy chemicals, right? So mm. my goal from finding it myself and healing my own trauma using it, I now support people by using it in my per my private practice. But also it's one of the things I share in on the larger scale uh, in when I do media appearances because it's what I call brain candy. It's the sweetest ways to be yeah. kind to your mind, right? The brain candy method is what I call it. So if we're able to empower people to do it to themselves, because you can self-haven and self-soothe, if we give people the tools to self-regulate, we are going to see so much change in people because mm -hmm. they're going to be empowered by knowing that they hold the tools to, to change their thoughts, move, and moods, and behaviors, and live the radical, aud audacious life that they deserve and find their joy. So that's what havening is. I love that. Thank you so much yeah. for sharing this today, Hillary. It has been so much fun to hang out with you. Listeners, I've gotten to hang out with Hillary for quite a while today. <laughs> yeah. um, this, is, this, is, I, this is her first podcast that she's done on Saturday or on oh, Sunday. Sunday. We're on yeah. Sunday. We're yeah. on Sunday uh, when we're recording. So I got to record with her earlier today. And then she recorded for our Mastering the Podcaster Mindset. And then she's recording here. So like I'm hanging out with Hillary all day on Sunday and it is such a blast. So I just want to say I have had so much fun. I have laughed and laughed and laughed and cried. <laughs> You've made me like telling the story about your father. You brought mm. tears to my eyes. And I just feel every time I'm in your space, I just feel uplifted. Mm. So thank you so much. And, and listeners, please look for Hillary. Hillary, where can they find you? You can find me on my website or any social media, hillaryrusso.com, Hillary Russo. But I'm actually going to share with your listeners a beautiful havening guided download video so people nice. can do it along with me and and put the power of active emotional well-being in your own hands to be kind to your mind and then mm. you can reach out to me further so i want to give that gift to your listeners yeah that is so wonderful we'll put the link to that in the show notes listeners please 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 go into the show notes find that gift and I hope something in this podcast resonated with you and made you think of a friend. And if it did, please share this episode with that friend who can get encouragement and insight and a great sense of humor from Hillary. And um, we can all just feel better together and live this radically audacious life where we say heck yes to ourselves. Heck yes. Thank you, everyone. Have a beautiful day. And thank you, Hillary. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I did. I know every time I get the pleasure of spending any time with Hillary, I feel uplifted and energized and just in a better space. And I think it's it's Hillary's energy that she has and her um, passion for living authentically with her purpose and her passion. It's just fantastic. So I wanted to share my three big takeaways from this episode, and I'm hoping that you will come on to Instagram and let me know what your big takeaways of this episode are. I love hearing from you guys. I love hearing how these episodes resonate with you. And it just, I just got to let you know, it makes my day. So let's go ahead and get into what my takeaways are. Number one. Hillary realized at a pretty young age that she really needed to live in alignment with herself. She got a dream job being an anchor for a TV news station. So for any of you that are in broadcasting, you know, getting a chance to be on TV and be a news anchor is a big deal and a big dream come true. And yet she realized that the doom and gloom stories that she was having to share really were not in alignment with who she was. 
And she realized she really couldn't keep going down that path. And so she made the really difficult decision to change her path and to leave TV, her job as a TV news anchor. And that takes so much courage to go down that path and make that decision. My second takeaway is she talked about life is a never ending healing process. She walked away from security during the 9-11, right after 9-11 when she was a news anchor, and she had a lot of trauma from that. And her husband at the time was in the military and serving overseas, and they had a lot of trauma from that. And then she went on to get into another marriage that was toxic, and she she had trauma from that as well. And she just so beautifully explains how important it is to constantly have that healing process because we all have various traumas in our life. We all go through these very difficult, very trying times. And how do we heal from those? And how do we keep this continual process of healing? And I think it's really important a very big takeaway that she continues it, a a never ending process of this healing. My third takeaway from Hillary is just her joy in what she does, her ability to take, combine her purpose and her passion and to create this profession. And her profession is not a one lane profession. She truly is an and profession. She is a university professor at a prestigious university in New York. She is a natural health practitioner. She is a podcast host. She hosts shows for CVS and QVC on their channels. She does a Daily Burn live streaming show that she hosts. She is constantly going out there and trying new things and following her passion and just going out there and being the and. Just constant growth, constantly trying new things. She doesn't define herself in by one thing or just traveling down one path. And I just find that so inspiring. So I hope you guys were just as inspired by Hillary as I have been. If you have been, go ahead and leave a review. Your review really helps this podcast be shared with others. And it means the world to me. I love reading your reviews. And as you guys know, I often come on the podcast and read your reviews and share them. And also share this episode with someone that Hillary's story of allowing and letting go would be inspiring for them. Thank you everyone so much for listening today. I hope you have an absolutely beautiful day. So now you know, and I hope you feel a bit more connected after the conversation with Tiffany and myself. And I encourage you to check out her podcast, Radical Audacity, to hear more stories of how others are showing up for themselves. Those heck yes moments, as she calls it. That link is on the podcast page. And if you're curious about those holistically speaking conversations with the authors of the two books I mentioned during the podcast, episode 20 with Sarah Payton and episode 66 with Dan Butner, just go to holisticallyspeaking.com and you'll find them there. But I also shared the links to make it easy for you to find. So what's your passion? What's your purpose? If you're on the fence, let me help you. I've decided in honor of my birthday, I am opening up a few more one-on-one coaching spots. Is it calling you? Just fill out the form on the podcast page and let's set up a call and find out. And before you leave this week, a gift from me to you, a short self-havening meditation to show you how this healing work can truly change your life. You can find that free download on the podcast page. Holistically Speaking is edited by David Seiss with music by Lipbone Redding and recorded on Squadcast. Thank you for making this birthday special, continuing to celebrate your passion and your purpose every day. And as always, be kind to your mind and don't forget to laugh. <laughs> <laughs>